Welcome to another edition of the Fuji Guys. My name is Billy. Today we're going to take a look at some of the updated features on the X-T1 and also the X-T1 Graphite Silver with the latest firmware update version 3.0. I'm going to have Jerry show you some of the new uh, updates to the firmware. So on December 18th, 2014, a new firmware version 3.0 was made available uh, for the X-T1. Uh, so now the X-T1, whether you're talking about the graphite silver or the black version, all have the exact same features. So here I have uh, an X-T1 with a lens and a grip and all that fun stuff. But more importantly, we're just going to go through some of the features. So one of the, the biggest feature here uh, would be uh, that was added was the electronic shutter of 132 thousandths of a second. So in looking at the top of the camera here, we can see that we've got our shutter dial here that goes up to 1 4 thousandths. And I'm going to actually put it to the um, 1 4 thousandths mode. And that way, um, now my screen's going to go absolutely dark here, uh, but that's because my, my shutter speed is so high. Um, so now we're at 1 4 thousandths. And when we go into the menu, we're going to see, um, I'm just going to pull this out a little bit so you guys can see it decently enough. There we go. Um, we're going to go over into um, the, I believe it's a fifth menu here, and it's going to give a shutter type. And here the, it is set to mechanical shutter. And as you can see here, there's electronic and a mechanical electronic, so a hybrid shutter speed. So the, the hybrid one will have a mechanical shutter of up to one four thousandths of a second. And then anything above that would be one thirty two thousandths of a second. Electronic would be strictly electronic regardless of which shutter speed you're at. Uh, and of course, mechanical is up to one four thousandths. Now, keeping in mind that when you're using electronic shutters, you do not have any access to flash whatsoever, whether you're in the hybrid or the regular electronic um, uh, shutter. So I'm just gonna put it to the electronic shutter. And so now we have um, an electronic shutter. So we've set it to one four thousandths. We can see here on the back of the screen, it's set to one four thousandths of a second. And using the dial on the back, uh, or sorry, on the front rather, um, it will give you access here to the shutter. Now it shows you here on the, this little symbol here, that's to show you that it's using the front dial and now I'm at 1 64 uh, hundredths of a second, 8,000, 10,000, 13, and all the way up to 1 32 thousandths of a second on that shutter speed. So bright sunny days, wide open aperture with a nice 2.8 lens like I've got here, um, or any other bright, bright lens uh, that you want to use in a, in a bright environment, but you don't want to start using neutral density filters, this would be a ideal uh, feature to use to be able to take those shots. Now, when you're using the electronic shutter as well, you can go into a silent shutter. Uh, so to do that, the big, best way to do it is to go into your setup and to go into your sound setup. So there's your sound setup there. And here you can eliminate all the audio noises that are, or so all the operational noises uh, that are going on. So uh, you can eliminate all the operation noises, but more importantly, you can do the shutter volume and turn that right off. So now, I can take a picture and it's dead, dead silent. So uh, advantages to that would be, of course, in areas where you don't want to be distraction, uh, where you don't want to hear the audio noise. Um, uh, that would be the, 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 the probably like weddings and things like that where you don't want to be disturbance, but you do want to get that shot. Um, that's where you'd be able to do that as well as museums and so on. So another uh, beautiful addition would be the customization of the Q button. So this is where you have the Q button on the back and when you press the Q button, it gives you all these wonderful um, options as well as of course your custom one, custom two settings. Now what these, up to custom seven, uh, what these actually do is enable the custom settings allow you to actually preset all of these options. But what you can actually do is actually customize what these options actually are. So not only customize the settings, but also customize the menu itself. So to customize the menu, it's real simple. Just press and hold the Q button, and then you get all your options. And then you get to choose which um, one you want to change. So this happens to be the AF mode. Uh, the dynamic range and so on. And you can actually eliminate, add um, different modes that you want. So if, for example, 
If noise reduction is not important to you, you could change it so that, say, for example, you're changing it to be nothing. You could have it where it's just a blank menu. So you're only picking and choosing, say, four or five specific items that you want to have quick access to. Or you can also change it so that it's your brightness of the LCD of the EVF, your advanced filter modes, um, your silent mode. Uh, so different types of modes, movie modes, silent adjustments. So there's quite a few options that are not even in the Q button that you can actually add to the Q button, uh, the Q menu rather. Uh, so that allows that. So in the Q, um, Q menu, of course, you do have one of the options is film simulation mode. And in the film simulations now, we've added a new one. So uh, we've got your standard, which is your Provia. Uh, you've got V for a Vivid or Velvia film. So these are all mimicking certain films we've got. And all of these features are brought in based on the feedback that you have provided. So the customers have provided. So keep providing that feedback. We really do like that. Um, so Velvia, uh, we have Astia, so a softer film. So this would be more for your portraits and things of that nature. You can also now add classic chrome. So this gives you that muted color that uh, that gives you that slide film kind of uh, kind of look. You have your pro negative high and pro negative standard that we had, uh, and that was the same as before, as well as your black and whites with your color filters, yellow, red, and green, and of course your sepia mode. So on the back of the camera, um, or on the top of the camera rather, we have our video mode there. Uh, so one of the features that were, was added because of the feedback that we got from uh, viewers like yourselves on the YouTube channel, um, we now have the ability to kind of manually edit or manually um, uh, adjust our video um, with the camera itself so you can adjust shutter speeds and aperture settings and things like that. So here's the movie setup just to show you the resolution ad ads that we've added. So now not only do we have you know your 1080 at you know 60 um, or 30 frames per second but now we've also added up to 50 frames per second or as low as 24 frames per second in 720 or 1080p. So this gives you that more cinematic look when we're talking about um, uh, the actual video quality itself. You could do some manual mic adjustments as well. So you could see here that as I'm talking, there's the internal mic, so it's picking up the left and the right. Um, of course, I'm closer to the left, so you can see that it's actually picking up the left mic a little closer uh, or a little bit more, and you can also adjust that so that you're not peaking as much. So now I'm just talking normally, and we can actually see that now it's a little bit more reasonable. It's not peaking, hitting those top bars. If I was to up it, now it's gonna hit those top bars, those, that yellow portion in the video there, uh, which would probably be a little too loud. Um, so that's for the mic adjustment. Of course, uh, there is a mic input on the side, um, sorry, on the other side, rather. So on this side here, we do have a mic input jack here uh, that can also be used as a remote as well as the cable remote. So you got to make sure that it's on the mic mode if you're going to use um, a lapel mic or a boom mic. And um, when you're adjusting your, your video, you can adjust your shutter speeds through your shutter speed dial, your aperture through your aperture, and of course your ISO. But now your aperture and shutter uh, for the most part, or your ISO and your shutter for the most part are adjusted beforehand. You do have a little bit of shifting ability on the, um, on the video side with the, uh, the shutter speed, but mostly on the aperture, you'll actually have full control. So if I start a video, There we go, start the video here. So you can see here, I'm just gonna move that up a little bit so you can see a little bit better. So as I adjust my aperture here, you can see it gets brighter and it gets darker. So you can really see an adjustment to your video as you're doing it. It'll also, of course, uh, affect a little bit of the depth of field as well because we are talking about playing with the aperture as well. Um, so that's uh, uh, some new features added to uh, the video recording mode to the uh, X-T1 with firmware version 3.0. So once again, based on the feedback that uh, we, we find so crucially important that you keep providing, we've added a couple of features when it comes to the um, uh, focusing. So um, now we have the ability uh, to do a couple of things. I'm just gonna go into the fifth menu here, the shooting menu. And here you're gonna see the AF plus MF and the uh, interlocking of the spot meter with the focus point. So first, um, we'll just do the interlocking of the spot meter, the AF point. So that just means that when you're in spot meter mode at the top here on the top of the camera under the, uh, under the shutter speeds, uh, you could turn that on. And that means that when you choose your, your AF point, 
um, now you, your your spot meter is actually tied into that same spot. So that gives you a little more uh, flexibility in those low light situations, or not low light, but those shadow type situations where you really want to meter on a specific spot. Um, you're maybe set up on a tripod and you don't necessarily want to reframe and you want to get a little bit different readings from the different areas. So you want to do a little bit more of your own uh, reading in that regard. Uh, that'll give you a little bit more ability to do that and focus on the same spot um, as your as your spot. So you don't have to spot the center, reframe, and then um, and lock your exposure that way. Um, what you can also do, of course, now as well, is tie in the autofocus and manual focus directly. So what this allows you to do is, when you're out using the autofocus with the shutter release, like you normally do, if you want to tweak that focus point and, and push it to the back or pull it forward, you can do so just by directly grabbing a hold of the lens and the manual focus ring and right away just start manually focusing and that'll give you that flexibility um, to be able to you know fine tune your focus on the fly manually. Now um, also added uh, a whole bunch of new um, uh, functionality as well so now we can also um, have your button and dial settings changed a little bit. So there's some new features here. Um, so for example, your uh, AF and AFL buttons uh, uh, setting, AE and AFL, you can change it. You can toggle them back and forth now. So that was something that was added to it as well. Uh, we also allow you to change the, the FN button for the focus area or just straight focus area. So now, this allows you to immediately, and this was a big, big feature that people wanted, was to be able to just immediately pick your focus point. No need for these to be function buttons. So that does eliminate uh, your four functions that are currently cur around the menu OK button. Uh, but of course, you could turn that on and off as you desire. Um, so I'm just going to go back here, go back into whoop, into the fifth, third menu, rather, and go into... Uh, See the second one, there we go. And now you have here the focus. So now I'm gonna go back and now you can have those. So the direction pad, you can change it so that they're FN buttons or just direct focus buttons. And of course your command dial settings, you can program those now as well. So you can have the front as your, as your shutter speed and your back as your, um, your f-stops or your, uh, your aperture or vice versa. I find that one really, really fun because um, I personally liked it the other way. I like having my shutter speed um, on the back and my, um, my aperture on the front, depending on the lens, of course, that you're using as well. And for the pros out there that are looking for some uh, customization on the white balance, uh, we've added a little more customization for you. Um, so it's, it's really nice now um, with the white balance, you've got auto. So I'm just looking here in the Q button here, but of course um, uh, you could program these. So you have your um, white balance one, custom one, custom two, and custom three. So now you can customize uh, three different custom white balances before starting um, so you can pre-program them uh, and have them ideal for different scenarios. Uh, so for example, if you, you're in a hockey arena um, that has a, a, a variant uh, white balance than you would in your studio, for example, your studio, you'd have another custom white balance um, and so on. So you could have different uh, white balances for different customizations and different needs. Um, so when you're, say for example, um, on your function buttons, one of them could be your white balance. For example, me, it's to the right. There's my one, there's my two, and there's my three. If I want to set my custom, so now i got to set it. So now it gives me the opportunity to set my, uh, my white balance. Uh, by just by hitting the uh, the shutter for the new white balance. So for example, I could use a sheet of white paper, for example, to get myself a decent white balance here. Boom, and now it's completed. As you can see, it now shows as complete. And then we can go okay to set that. So now it shows up here, my custom white balance one. If I was to then go to my Q button and go to custom white balance two, it's gonna give me a different hue and a different white balance. So it gives me a little more flexibility, a little more control on the white balance itself. 
So back when the X-T1 was announced uh, and the SP1 was announced, both being Wi-Fi devices, um, it was asked, well, if they're both Wi-Fi, why can't I connect directly to uh, the printer with my camera? Well, now you can. With version 3.0 firmware, you can now uh, connect directly to the SP1 printer. And I'm just gonna show, walk you through how you do that. So the first thing you gotta do is you gotta tell the camera which device we're gonna connect to, uh, or which Instax printer we're gonna connect to, because uh, there's a whole ton of these wireless printers out there. You can connect to eight different devices up to the printer, including, say, eight X-T1s. So, what you'll do first is you'll go into the menu and you will go into the settings and find the wireless connection settings or the connection setting here. And you hit to the right and you'll see the Instax Share printer settings. So you hit to the right and now it's gonna ask you for the SSID, which is the serial number on the bottom here of the printer. And what that basically does is it says that I'm communicating with this printer. So I've already entered in the numbers here just for the sake of speed and you hit menu, and now it's gonna ask you for the password, which is 1111. So that's done. So now, uh, what you do is you take any picture you want uh, that's on the card, on the camera itself, so you hit menu, um, to, or the playback rather, and then you can just hit menu. And you'll see here on the second playback menu, you'll see Instax printer print. Ooh, let's go back, and we're gonna go to Instax printer print and hit to the right. So now it's trying to communicate. Now I just got to turn my printer on and now it's going to communicate between the two. And now it's asking, so now it's communicating and it says, is this the print you want? And you just hit OK to transmit the image. And now the image will then print from the share printer. And there we go. Here it comes. And there we go. And that's our Instax Share printer print directly from the X-T1. So there you have it, the Fujifilm X-T1 Black as well as the Graphite Silver Edition using this new updated firmware version 3.0 offers some great new features. Hopefully you learned a few things from Jerry, one of the Fuji guys. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as, well as follow us on Twitter. Until then, I'm Billy of the Fuji guys. Thank you.